Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk, with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hey, welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break. Um, I'm sitting in Patricia's hot seat. Um, she's had a family commitment, so not here, but we're with the blinged out Barbara Kessler. It's the, everyone's going to be in the holiday bustle now since um, it's the Friday before Thanksgiving and talking about Barbara, music, jewelry, networking and all sorts of stuff today. So Very welcome cool. aboard. Nice welcome. to be here. Thank you for having me. Thanks for joining <laughs> Thank you. us. You were actually part of our show last March too a little bit. You blinged us out when we did the That's makeover right. show. Makeover, you and stuff. Did. Yeah. about that. And that, that, was, that cool. was a lot of fun. Yeah, that was that really fun. It was a lot of fun. So before we get into all the cool stuff that you do, and you do so many cool things, you've lived in town now how long? My daughter was just about to turn one when we moved in, and so she's going to turn 14, so 13 years. Wow. Wow. End of December so, will be 13 years. And you have two girls. Yeah. One just graduated. Amelia, who just graduated high school, and um, Elena, who's an eighth grader. Awesome. And she's at Berkeley now, right? Yeah. Berkeley College of Music. Very cool. I wonder where <laughs> she gets that from. <laughs> we tried. We <laughs> tried. We <laughs> tried. We she were trying this whole engineering thing yeah, with her. It didn't, didn't go. Mm. In case you don't I mean, know. I've seen her do <laughs> solos places and stuff like that at like yeah. school and at the senior center. She's very comfortable on stage. In fact, you know, when I used to tour for a living, she would be Barbara in the audience. Barbara is a critically acclaimed singer and musician herself, so <laughs> we'll get into that. Yes, but when you toured, <laughs> well, she would be in the audience from like seven weeks old on, and so she, she grew up so comfortable with the idea of being on stage and performing for people. So she, she would be shy when she was young, and you'd, you know, she'd be kind of slow to warm up to big groups of people, but get her on stage and she'd be like in her element. Like anybody else would be like, oh, there's a huge crowd of people here and I'm on a so, microphone. So ah. Not on the stage, she was shy. Yeah. But on the stage, oh my God, that's Yeah, amazing. it was really obvious that she just was like, it was like a second part of her nature to just be singing and, you know, just in her element without, without that worry about, about How cute. yeah, it was really, it was How really cute. remarkable. It's funny when you see your kids just kind of absorb certain things. They're just, or they're just born with certain now things. Now your second, is, is she real musical too? She is. She's not as much of a comfortable performer, which she also okay. didn't, you know, I stopped touring when she was maybe one or two, so she didn't get as much exposure to that life. Now, were you raised She's in a musical family? Were you raised in a musical family? No, my no. loving music, musical loving family, but yeah. not really, nobody played instruments. Um, my mom would sing us little, uh, you know, the novelty songs of the days. Like, do you remember, like, <laughs> Mare's eat oats and those eat oats, a little lambs eat ivy. Like, all that kind of stuff. Like, mm -hmm. some ivy was too. comfortable. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't you? So that kind of stuff was... Notice yeah, I didn't sing it, she did. <laughs> no, you said it great. This is it, you were right in tune. But so, no, not really. But my sister, who's older than me by eight years, she used to um, be a f huge fan of music. So I would raid her. Mm -hmm. Record box. Her 45. Us all. Her oh, 45. <laughs> and albums. Exactly. I still have mine. So Do you? Yeah, I still have Idols. tons of them. What was your yeah. favorite? Um, Can you remember? In high school, I was really into, high school, college was Journey, Sticks. Yeah. Things like that. Before that, everything from, you know, Partridge Family, David right. Cassidy. Right. That's from, like, when we were young. But my sister, you know, had stuff from the late 60s, early 70s. I was going to Yeah. I have my mom's 45s, <laughs> which are, like, Sinatra and Bobby Darren. Oh. And, and my dad had 78s. Oh, yeah. yeah. Jazz 78s. I remember those. And the big band era. Yeah. yeah. So. so music was always kind of part of your life, but then you thought that as a profession? Well, really quite late, actually. I mean, I, I um, was kind of a, a little bit more introverted when I was in middle school, and I got a guitar when I was in maybe fourth or fifth grade. And that was my refuge. I would just go listen to the records, try to figure it out on my guitar. You know, I didn't actually start writing songs till after college years. Really? Yeah. So, so you grew I up here? No, I grew up on Long Island. Oh, on Long Island? New York. Yeah. Do, you, do you still have family there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, two of my siblings live up here. One of my siblings lives on the island, and my parents are still on the island. Oh. So, so do you yeah. have Thanksgiving here, or will you go to there? Thanksgiving is one that we usually kind of do in different groupings yeah but we'll probably go down for Christmas or at least right after Christmas mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So did you major in music then in college? No. No. I went to Cornell, you know. Major <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about. The Ivy League girl. Uh, <laughs> industrial and labor relations. And wow. I studied. I, I toyed with going back to grad school and doing a more of an academic <coughs> thing. I, I really mm -hmm. liked organizational behavior and group psychology and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So and how did you get into music? <laughs> 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 Being well, like on national it, tours. Well, I always loved music. And I always found my uh, my most my greatest solace through music. I still do. It's like a place where I just escape and feel very connected without having to think sure. about it too much. And then um, I never wanted to write songs because Joni Mitchell was alive. Yeah, and, <laughs> and you when you listen to her songs, oh my God! When you listen to s the great songwriters that I loved, I would just be like, "What have I got to say? Yeah. What what can I add to this?" And it was a very slow process of getting more fearless and just being like, you know what? There's only me from my experience. I, that's all I got. So I might as well just try to make. And then it, I moved here, and there was a really big um, folk and acoustic music scene in Boston, yes. which I didn't know prior to getting here. And so I was inspired. So what brought you to move here? After college, uh, I traveled around a bit. I lived in LA for a short time and lived in Texas for a short time working for a, a corporation. And then when I came uh, back here, um, I, I drove, drove an ice cream truck a couple of summers on That's fun. <laughs> and as I was doing that, because that was sort of a, a non-corporate job, I, was, I sort of realized the corporate thing wasn't you're for like, me like you're immediately. You were going through I called detox. I, yeah, it was like my mid-twenties, and I just um, was exposed to the music scene. I got to pick up an ice cream truck here. once at one of the hood plants. Yeah, that's up, what we did. Up at Char uh, Charlestown. Charleston. Yeah. And I was probably, I was doing a fundraiser. I was probably like a senior in college, but it was back in Ashland. And I was doing the fundraiser for, for a drum and bugle cord they had hired me. That's where we rented our trucks from there. And yeah. I had to play, I was playing the thing all the way down the <laughs> pike. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very interesting position, like, being the ice cream truck driver. In a way, I think it kind of prepared me for performing or something. <laughs> you know, because you've got these lines of, of mm -hmm. people and they're, you know, they're, they're there for your, your product. You know, they're not really looking at you. They're like, I'll that. have, uh, <laughs> I don't know how that's preparing, but. So, so you did that, but, but how did you get into, still, how did you get into music? Well, so when I lived here and I, I was exposed to this great music scene in Boston, I just started going open mics. And I started, you know, while I was on the Cape, in addition to driving an ice cream truck, I started getting gigs as like, um, you know, background music, playing cover songs, James Taylor, mm -hmm. Bonnie Raitt, so in little pubs and clubs. So I, and you just I became professional in that way, just you know, playing other people's music in these in these clubs and getting paid for it. And then I started writing my own songs, hitting the open mic circuit. From open mics, very quickly got gigs at the places, and then I won a few songwriting contests. And then uh, my biggest kind of thing that sort of set me on a more national path was um, there's a folk singer named Christine Lavin. I don't know if you've heard of her. She was on Rounder yeah. Records for years and she used to do these collections of I worked with Rounder writers. Records because they had a group called Girl Authority. Oh. And girl oh, okay. and there was it was like a, a youth pop group that used to play at events. Oh, well That's they cool. they put out And these Rounder records. out of Cambridge is just a yeah, great and little artist the house. Distribution. Yeah. And so she included me on one of her records that was a bunch of songwriters. So Jonathan Edwards was on it, and um, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of some of the, the David Wilcox, some of the bigger national songwriter names. And here's me. I'd never done anything but an open mic. I'm on this record, and it starts getting airplay around the country. And so then it was sort of the scene was set for me when I put out my own record to have already had some airplay in these different markets. And then I just, I just kind of got lucky, and it kind of it happened really fast. Wow. Um, yeah, and then I started so, getting other opportunities. So what was, is there a particular tour or show that you did that it was just for you was like, wow. Wow. When did you feel like, oh my goodness, I'm right. really here doing this. I know, it's so funny. It's so funny, like opening for Arlo Guthrie and um, the Indigo Girls, and <gasps> they're playing like five to 8,000 seat, you know, arenas and stuff, and it's like, there are so many people here. I can't see beyond the first three or four rows, mm -hmm. but they're digging it, like all of these people. And it was it was really kind of surreal. It's like that's where I grew up, just loving. And you ended music. up marrying a musician. And my husband's a drummer. Yeah, he went to Berkeley you know, too. And then have a home studio now. Yep, we built in our barn a, a studio for our own, you know, use. I use it as a teacher when I do coaching and recording. I have a couple of songwriting students, so we have a great opportunity to. Um, you know, work through their songs. 
uh, in yeah. the studio, and I've done you know a bunch of productions in my studio. Well, for you me. just said you're doing um, the jazz ensemble at the high school, helping yeah. them. They're recording three songs. They're coming um, uh, to record, and we'll be using the songs to um, to promote their work. Yeah. How so cool it's 20 is that? Piece, 20 piece. That's so band. awesome. Yeah, they're so great. very So very I cool. kind of learned the But you're doing stuff with the youth the and you're working with the school system and things like that too. Yep. Hopkinton Center for the Arts. I was their uh, open mic host for years and now I'm going to be bringing that back now that the new space is open. Oh my God. Isn't that I, awesome. Wonderful gala yeah. the other week. Um, if you didn't, it was sold out. So if you didn't make it, it was but fun. Boy, now, what did you a hop on the mic with hot building. acoustics at all? I did. I hopped on. The I was mic. assuming. I was like, all right, is she gonna go oh, home? Oh man, I left that's hot so acoustics. funny because I didn't stay to the end. I was so wiped that day. Yeah. I started my morning. Early, I know it was, but it was a busy so you, week. I missed that. On. I just jumped so up when they were playing an Eagles song, and oh. I think it was Witchy Woman, and so <gasps> I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, it, and it was such them. last. Not that they needed me; they've got plenty oh, harmony. No, the but they're so much fun. Yeah, so a great guys. group, and they're local. And um, the arts have really a big factor. Shout you know, out. a very big hub in Hopkinton in some ways. Yeah. You know, the underground music that happens at you know Front Street. Uh huh. You know, then the HCA and everything that's beyond just performing, and you know this painting and photography classes and, then the and musical textures theater and theater that happens at ESL <gasps> right. and the kids who are in town who are so talented with that stuff. I mean a couple of weeks ago to have done that event, the gala's yep. going on and that's sold out. Front Street Concerts is sold out and then we were doing a fundraiser, a private event at Waterfresh Farm that was also music mm -hmm. and sold out. And sold well, you out. know what? That's how I came became to teaching and coaching was I was doing the open mic for H well it used to be called Enter Stage Left before right, they with Mary, Mary and Kelly together and kids would come out of the woodwork to come and perform and people would say do you teach and I was like no <laughs> but then they were like would you teach so um, hot acoustics bass player ah. Carter his daughter came to me when she was like 13 wow. and she was already writing songs like really uh, well thought out interesting melodic songs in fact one of them that she wrote while she was still coming to me is on her album now wow. so I mean these kids were just like oh what's in the Hopkinton water there's like these kids that are coming out that are just filled with I mean, music and, and the so kids that graduated last year your daughter Eric Flygoff the things yeah. that have come out of this I know Mike's Mike Spector yeah. oh. son incredible musicians um, and it, it's just something in the Hopkinton well thing. I, but, well, I, but I um, want to back your husband's up. still playing out he's also doing um, carpentry yeah and then home improvement. Yeah. He's got his home improvement license. Yeah. Well, but but back to what you're doing and uh, the groups you're affiliated with, because you are offering a very broad. I mean, it's for the very young, the very inexperienced, to the very talented, and to have a community that we live in, and to have that ability that no matter what level you are, to have access to, because it's a spark. It, it, yeah. it ignites, and, and when I think about our community, this is such a vibrant part, and you're so involved in that vibrant part, and supporting it, and fostering it. Um, it. You know, they always say, we need more coders in computer science, but oh, by the way, <laughs> we need more artists, artists. And, and in the arts, because that's what is part of the enrichment in life. And well, I just love it. You guys are uh, so Barbara's deeply awesome. embedded. Barbara's taken on the lead as president of a regional networking group. You might want to share some about oh, that. Oh, yeah. That and that group um, is really trying to draw a diverse group of women together. Right. It's called the Network of Enterprising Women. And we meet um, at Faith Community Church the first Monday of every month between um, September and June, unless that Monday First Monday happens to be a national like, oh, and then holiday. Then we move it to the next week. Yeah. But um, it draws women who are um, a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of solopreneurs, people who mm -hmm. are, um, you know, do, doing their own craft. There are a lot of mm -hmm. artists and and um, sh There's members authors who are I've, I've met there. Authors, um, graphic designers. Yeah. But there are some other um, members who are representatives of local businesses, local banks, banks attorneys, um, real estate professionals. But what we all bring. The common element is that um, we're all interested in growing our, not just our business, but our, our connectedness in the community. And so there's a and lot of opportunity and supporting one another and getting educated. We bring in speakers every month. Oh, cool. um, and, you know, anywhere from, you know, how to 
deal was, with colleagues. I was that one a couple months ago when you were actually the speaker. I was the speaker. At yeah, the one I, I was to. leading the Free Your Voice uh, workshop that I've developed, mm -hmm. which, you know, it's just about touching back into what we have to say. You guys should work together on these workshops. And how, <laughs> and how we express ourselves. And, and when we notice ourselves holding ourselves back, how to break free from that. So it's not just freeing your physical vocal cords, but freeing who you are and what you have to share. Well, you know. and, and that's, that's kind of interesting because I know there's a lot of work being done at the corporate America level at how corporations hmm. hire and promote women, but you're really working on the individual level and on helping right. them achieve, you know, and talk a little bit more about that. You know, what are some of the, the things that you try to help these individuals, you know, find? Well, I think the idea of a voice, mm -hmm. um, it really struck me as I was working with people that it's not just, um, again, how we physically use the instrument of our voice, but it's, it's, it really isn't, it, it's, the, it's who we are. You know, mm -hmm. when we speak to somebody, it's the first thing somebody hears, you know, whether you're on the phone or when you're meeting. I mean, it's, 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 the, it's who, you know, we are and what we have to say and offer in the world. So for me, I'm very interested in clearing away some of those blockages, whether they're physical, like we hold ourselves quiet and, and, and not. I don't have or, that problem. Or <laughs> hunching down, or whether they're mental, like, yeah. oh, I shouldn't have said that. Mm -hmm. Or I wonder if what I have to offer is in value mm -hmm. in this situation. So there's that mindfulness component of just saying. The voice is in your head as yes, well. Yes, utilizing those and, and, and you know using different techniques to acknowledge those voices, but then mm -hmm. move past them and say, I am nervous, but also I'm willing to contribute. So what does it take to get me from here, shyly in the corner, to there where I can make a contribution? So it's really, you know, it's, it's about that bridge. Very cool. Um, yeah, I love to connect with what Connie's She's bringing doing to one the community, um, too. Well, she did one last week last on last week, Saturday right. at Waterfresh on, I have to and make that's, the next that's one. kind of what you preempt to well, do with Stanford. So, just to briefly, because mm. this isn't about me, but I do a leadership well, and mentoring program at Stanford yeah. with the women's field hockey team. And then I also use the same curriculum and coach a lot of entrepreneurs, women, particularly women entrepreneurs. <laughs> and I focus, while I do train mentors, I actually focus on training the mentee yeah. on how to use their mentors. Mm. And then I go through a whole leadership speaker series, just a bunch of topics. But it's... Wow. A lot about, you know, we do have a value system that sometimes limits us. I yeah. can't, I, you know, I can't because my kids are young. I, right. I shouldn't because, and getting rid of some of those, <laughs> and just a bunch of extras, but it's a lot of fun. So offline, we should chat about yeah, it absolutely. and share, because I'm all about, um, you know, I, 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 we're all lifelong learners, and uh -huh, I had some absolutely. great experiences uh, recently with a Stanford program that I Oh, I want to hear all took, about this. It was a workshop yeah. that I took and cool stuff, cool stuff. Yeah, I took, um, I think I mentioned to you, the Positive Psychology course at Kripalu. Yeah. So it's like an 11 month long oh, um, program in, in uh, positive psychology. So there's actually a lot of data oh. and a lot of, you know, places where they've identified where, you know, our, our neural pathways are set in this one way habitually or because we're wired that way for you know different reasons and so dismantling those thought processes yeah. that hold us back you can actually make some serious positive change yeah. which was thrilling for me to understand like that it's not just about oh I really want to be more confident and I really you can identify in the places where you've kind of incorporated certain habitual patterns and ways of thinking and ways of expressing that are self-perpetuating and, and you can change them yeah. it's thrilling it is thrilling. I'm going to geek out all over you on this. Well, no. Well, so because see here, Ivy Lee Cornell, the music, the ice cream truck, you know, the, the, ADD. the, the, ne <laughs> oh, what? the networking. Oh, the We're good at that. The networking, go. and then your blinged out. So let's talk about the bling. Oh, you're you're, you're, you're yes. going to be featuring your bling yes. at an event I'm, in a couple weeks. Yeah, we're going to do the Real Housewives of Hopkinton, which I did. The, the, last the, shopping the, for the cause. Shopping for the cause of the Real Housewives of Hopkinton, yeah. which was really fun last year. And yeah, Sapata is something that. It's a company um, on the side I, I represent, and uh, I just love their stuff. It's For me, cute. It was, it's when funky. I was, wasn't doing the music and I was home with my kids, it was a way to get out of the house, meet with other yep. moms, mm -hmm. make some money, and also get a ton of free jewelry. Everything I got, I got for free. <laughs> 
Everything I'm wearing. Even I got the belt for buckle. Free. Everything. <laughs> Love it. Which is a great, you know, it, it's fun. And I, you know, I do it so on the side that most people don't know that I do it, but that's, it's because I love the product. Um, and I love, uh, you know, a lot of the things that I do are benefits. So I end up making money, the cause ends up making money, and the host gets free jewelry. So it's mm. like a win, win, win. Jewelry's um, good. <laughs> yeah. Jewelry's good. Jewelry's free good. jewelry. You can always change your outfit with just a little bit on of different bling. bling. Yeah. Well, and we're thrilled that you're joining us again for the shopping yeah, uh, it's for cause. Yeah, great. What a great and the vendor space you guys is sold came out. Up with. I mean, we are wonderful. Packed. Wonderful. It, packed. it is. We're actually going in a different entrance this year. The flow's a okay. little bit different. Oh, Same I can't room, wait. but yeah, December second. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Sold out with the vendors. I almost sold out with all the sponsorships. Really excited great. about what this is going to mean for the project. The project. So the. Last year and this year, um, Project Just Because is the charity the that benefactor this is going to this. benefit. Um, okay. And, and I think we've learned a lot in the last year of doing it. I mean, last year we threw it together in two to three weeks. Your we idea and brainchild. And we, didn't, you we didn't have a lot of sponsorships, so you know our costs were a lot higher too. You know, running around buying things and stuff like that. Oh where gosh. Now at least the sponsorship is going to offset us. You know, having wine and stuff like that because Great. we took care of all those things and then it had to come off. The, so we're hoping to be able to double what we donated to the charity last year, this right. year, and it looks very, very promising that that's going to happen. Well, and, Wonderful. and the um, vendors are pretty local mm -hmm. and unique, mm -hmm. and very unique. Yeah, lots of different. Lots very. Of different. I mean, a lot there's of several fun. jewelry ones where, like yourself, you're Everybody's the only one that's different. Silpata uh -huh. and really silver. And people don't realize Silpata silver is the same as Tiffany silver. It is the it's same the high end, high end quality. Point nine yeah. But the um, you know, yeah. there's someone. Um, Catherine Hall, who does you know little gemstones and things like that, she'll oh, be there. Oh, great! Um, and um, the woman who does confidence beads, these oh. beads that um, we have like the rocks, the, the RHH oh. collection. Oh, very so, nice. But then there's you know a, a woman that does belts. There's a woman mm -hmm. that um, does knit hats that actually has yep. a resin in it, golden pond. There's someone else oh, that does great. hand painted cards, but um, cool. scarves and things. I mean, mm -hmm. two of the um, vendors are actually 15 year olds. I remember that from and last year. And they were last year. year. Last year they were 14, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now they got older. They were great. They had all those But we're thrilled that you're coming back to that. And, and we have yeah. um, and, and so how does it out. work? So people can come and shop. They pay an entry fee they that pay all gets entry, donated. The, pay, the entry fee after net cost, costs, uh, the net yeah. proceeds go to the project. That's great. So the, and, um, and the vendors pay an entry fee. Right. And um, event, it, Eventbrite seems to like to take a big hunk of it. Yeah. But then after that, the net proceeds after whatever, it's printing or name tags or booze and stuff like that, all goes to the project. And um, it's, we were sold out last year. It's I mean, probably going to be sold We're not out even going to allow people to buy yeah. tickets at the door this year. It's, it's got to be it's, purchased, it's in advance. purchased in advance. Yeah. Um, right. Well, but I'm going to do some Christmas shopping. Yeah, That's great. Well, I did Christmas last year too, and, yep. and a lot of fun. But um, so you, how long have you been doing the spot jewelry? Um, Let's see, maybe five, six years. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, wow. That's mm -hmm. fun. Yeah. So, so you'll get a chance to see Barbara there and a whole bunch of other people and some free food, well, complimentary food and stuff all bundled in with their donation when they, they come. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we're, that's basically, it's the Wednesday after Thanksgiving. So nice. we're going into Thanksgiving this week, and then okay, the Wednesday right. after, people are ready to shop we're, and roll. We're on Christmas. And stuff like we're that. So holiday. Yeah. The holiday is, track this after is the that. Holiday. So um, as, as you think about, um, you know, you're approaching the holiday season, is this a particular busy time? I'm thinking of all the things you do, and I'm going, you got to be swamped. Do you, you do know, holiday concerts and stuff, too? Not too much. No. Oh, cool. So, I mean, in terms of me performing? Yeah. I have really taken a back seat to performing over the last few years. Really? Um, it's, uh, I put out an album in 2012, and I did a, that year I probably did the most gigs I've done since kind of semi-retiring mm -hmm. from, from performing. Um, and the music industry changed so much in the time that I was gone. It was harder to get airplay and harder to get booked. A lot of the venues I used to play had closed down. And it just, it just dawned on me, you know what? I've, my heart's not in that place of pounding the pavement for a, a career, touring a career yeah. artist. Um, so now when people ask me to do small local things and I can do it, I just, I just show up. Cool. Um, so no concerts booked this season. Um, I 
am playing as part of uh, Wake Up and Smell the Poetry, That's which right. is tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, with another dear friend of mine who is a, uh, a stellar poet <laughs> and an award-winning um, professor. She works at, at BU. Um, she's going all the way on her second Fulbright scholarship. Wow. Yeah, this, uh, well, and Wake Up and Smell the Poetry, and Cheryl, Cheryl Peralt. I love that show. Yeah. What a wonderful show. And the other person on the, the, the show tomorrow will be Sandy Corcoran, who is um, a counselor and an educator and a, a trained shaman. She has all of this wisdom from other countries. Wow. I actually, she's a client of mine. I produced her CD. She made a CD of meditations to go along with her book. She's a published oh, wow. author. And so I know all three of, you know, I mean, all the other two wow. of us three tomorrow. Um, so it should be a thrill. Very so. cool. And I'm the token songwriter on the, on the bill. So. <laughs> <laughs> the well, you're doing, you're doing that. Um, you're very involved in the HCA. Mm -hmm. You have your students, and yep. then you, and you have your and husband clients, and kids, and, and, but, and you're yeah. you're everywhere in the community, though. You're always helping out. Group? Well, I have the yeah, I'm part of the P PTA, and I try to show up when they when they need help, and um, I do yoga in the community, yeah. and um, I just try to get, get out of the house. You're so wild. Wild. But, um, <laughs> So we, it's well, it's funny when you work from home because literally days can go by, and you'll be like. I'm wearing yoga pants again. I think I need to put something else on and, and, and go out into the world, yeah. you know, and that's, you know, yeah. a lot of us who work from home getting caught yeah. in that rut. So we're wrapping up, but I want, we want to wish everyone a happy, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Turkey Day. Day. You know, we look forward to seeing um, a whole bunch of you at Shopping for the Cause on the second. And personally, tonight I'm going to a wedding and I want to say congratulations to Chris and Mary. Yay! <laughs> See you guys. Cheers.